Perfect. So thank you for everyone joining us today. It's 11 o'clock, so we're going to start and we will be talking about the British School of Fashion and all the fashion courses on offer. Um, so first off, um, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Jackson and I'm the director for the British School of Fashion. Uh, we're based in London. Perfect. And can you tell us a bit how the British School of Fashion is connected with GCU London? Yeah, sure. Well, British School of Fashion, um, as, as an independent school within the university, um, has been around for about seven years. Um, although um, fashion education as such has existed in Glasgow Caledonian University for much longer than that. Um, in fact, back in my in the day, my one of my jobs at when I was at another university was to be an external examiner on the um, postgraduate international fashion marketing program. So. Um, I always, always loved the university well before I had the opportunity to come along and join it at the London campus. Oh, that's great. Um, so the British School of Fashion specialises in fashion knowledge, which is generated through a unique balance of leading industry <laughs> factors and is underpinned by le the latest academic research. Um, could you explain how this translates into a classroom setting? Yes, uh, for sure. There's a, there's a lot tied up in there, so I'll try and break it down. <laughs> Um, I think that fashion education can take lots of different forms. Um, some are very theoretical um, and, and centers around fashion theory, cultural studies. Some are very practice based um, and concerned with, um, say, the design and production of, of fashion items, whether that be clothing or you know, leather goods and shoes and things like this. Um, at the British School of Fashion, actually, is a postgraduate only. Um, the school with business related programs so if you like they're not practice based but and this is the interesting thing we we draw content and knowledge um, from the industry so what do i mean by that well uh, first of all the programs are um set within the context of the, of the university's mission the common good mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, I'm sure that, that many people listening to this are, are aware of the increased um, importance of sustainability and social responsibility and ethics and, yeah. um, and, and inclusion. And these, these are things which, which should be normal in business. In fact, I would say a good business, but um, you have found over the years that, that, that some parts of the, the fashion luxury industry have probably been quite uh, weak in these areas. So whatever all we do is set in that context. I'll come on to the, the program shortly, but the, the way that uh, I would describe what we do is a balance of the theoretical that some of the other um, universities offer, but almost a unique access to specialist industry. So for me, learning about um, digital marketing techniques isn't necessarily great just theoretically you need to be able to um hear so for example from an online retailer that that engagement is is four and a half times greater online if you include editorial content and you have shot the look with a blogger or something like this and that, that's that's a kind of simple illustration of how the the daily uh, dialogue we have with industry in its different forms um helps provide a sort of currency of information over the theory that's great thank you um, and now moving on to the courses, can you maybe briefly um, discuss the four courses available and um, maybe distinguish between them? Um, so what skills do students gain from each of them? Yes, of course. The, well, we have um, two luxury programs, master's programs, and we have a fashion and lifestyle marketing and a fashion business creation. I'll, I'll briefly ex explain both of those. Um, we have, we have the only MBA luxury brand management program in the country. I'm pretty certain it's the only MBA luxury program in the country. And that, that matters a lot for a lot of international students, for example, who want, who want um, a type of program which is going to fast track their career to senior management. And so they have to have a wider understanding um, of, of the, the business functions around luxury, not just marketing. Um, so, so the MBA it is slightly different in the sense that it is much more industry focused than uh, the other ones. Having said that, the MSc uh, luxury marketing is embedded um, within the industry too, and is focused <clears throat> around um, 
digital marketing, social media, if, if, if there were two modules or a pick out that, that stood out to be different from the MBA, it, it's that sort of um, approach to understanding the practical um, vocation of marketing in, in, in current form rather than the old style sort of um, looking at placing ads in print media, for example. And um, whereas the MBA is, has a lot more in the way of strategy models, uh, both the, um, the luxury programs have a, a very strong law module, which is unusual. Um, the MBA has a finance module, um, it has a, a distribution model uh, module, and it has a very strong module at the back of called luxury concepts and practice, which exactly balances the idea of theory and practice. So you do a deep dive into the theory um, and we have many guest speakers coming to the program. <clears throat> so that, that they're fundamentally the differences between the MBA and the luxury uh, marketing uh, program. So luxury uh, brand management MBA and the MSC luxury marketing. Then uh, I think, as you know, we're well about the fashion and lifestyle marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you want to, want to comment on that too as well. It, it was felt that um, the international fashion marketing as a, as a, a title probably didn't fully reflect um, the wider um, spread of, of fashion and its influence over other categories, not just clothing. And, and so, um, whereas maybe I, I think possibly if I had to pick a brand that the old style international fashion marketing probably would be talking about would be Nike and in a sort of sporting sense, um, whereas the um, fashion and lifestyle marketing is very much more Lululemon. Yeah. You, you know, so it's, it's, it's a, it understands that actually fashion has met multi forms of expression, whether it be your iPhone or whether it be which gym you go to or, or even just what your diet is. Um, and so the, there is, there is this quite, there's a good mix actually, there are fashion theory on there, but then the, the sort of the business modules are geared to that wider sense of the industry. Um, and there are some obviously practical elements on there too. Um, around the use of Photoshop and um, um, InDesign and those sorts of um, tools necessary to generate media content. And then we have our unique, as far as I know, um, fashion business creation program. And it, it really is designed to um, put people on the track for setting up their own business. Now we have to be a bit careful because it, it's, not, it's not a, a program which enables you to make products and, and setting often setting up your own business programs have that it, it's much more deep dive into um, the the practical aspects of it so understanding for example how small businesses are structured what how, how um, what the essentially what the anatomy of a small business could be um, and the, the types of um, distribution, for example, that you may naturally get set up. And so do you need to um, have your own shop? How do you get your own online presence? Um, how you might sort out an app, if an app is the best way for you to distribute to your clients. Looking at the supply chain, do you drop ship? How, how, how do you get those products through to you? Um, and then once you've, you've learned that, then it's about how that business can grow, how you optimize it, how you, you, how you think about the cash flow. So it's 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 um it's like a selection of the best elements of, of other kinds of topics put together around to um, enable you to understand how to create your own fashion business. That's great. So a great variety of courses. I think I think so, uh, Maria. And and the the issue is that they are all innovative. We had the first and only MBA luxury brand management. We have the only fashion lifestyle marketing and the only fashion business creation. And I think this is this goes back to the point earlier about. Um, Scottish influence because to my mind uh, Scotland has always been hyper hyper innovative um, and uh, and so the, it's, it's it naturally reflects a culture I think of, of a Scottish innovative approach but with a, a London contextual delivery. Yeah very much going with the environment and the industry um, and would you say is there a difference in the content between the part-time and the full-time or the distance learning courses? Okay, a very good question. Um, <clears throat> currently, the, the only difference between part-time and full-time um, is the number of modules you do. So you don't do them at a different time. Um, you, you just 
do one instead of two or two instead of four. So essentially you, you engage with the full-time students, but you, it takes you longer to do the program. Um, and distance learning takes on a whole new meaning now since, since uh, the pandemic. And of course, everything is uh, online. We have a very flexible model um, in the British School of Fashion <clears throat> where um, we have three points of contact per week online with the students for each module. So one of those is a sort of live session, a bit like this, that could be used either as a lecture or as a seminar, but it's the first, it's the first point of contact. Four days later, there's a, it's a deadline to upload some work that you'd be given as a task. And uh, that could be to a wiki or a Padlet or a discussion board. It's not a huge amount, but it's, it's sort of building on your understanding of the topic that was discussed in the first session. And then I think, <coughs> excuse me, before the, the, the pattern starts again for week two, in day six, you have a live tutorial session. Okay. Um, so it, it's that three-step process, and it seems to have been, we're in week seven now, we've had our uh, student um, staff consultative meeting, uh, and um, they, the guys seem to be happy, they understand the process and can engage with it. Uh, and so distance learning, it doesn't necessarily require someone to be um, in the country. You know, on, on one of the programs, for example, we have um, students in India, South Africa, um, Germany, and Norway and Bambri, and here are all, all studying. And um, frankly, you know, it's, there's absolutely no difference at all between my conversation with you now, uh, wherever you are, Maria, I'm not quite sure. Um, <laughs> but, but for example, with say a couple of the students who, because we are uh, in a lockdown in London at the moment, so we're delivering online, even if you're in London, then if you're in your, your house in the, in the West End or flat in the West End or locally, you know, sort of um, near Spitfields, then the experience is precisely the same for you as if you're in Bahrain or India. Yeah, that's true. New changes. <laughs> yeah, and but you know, it's just the way that life is. And I, you know, we are an, an innovative school and we have an innovative approach I think a much more social um, approach to, to the online learning, which, which is important because students can feel isolated otherwise if they do too much by themselves. Great. And um, do you offer any scholarships for the four fashion courses? Uh, yes, um, there, there is, there's, a, there's a range of scholarships that the university offers because it's, um, you know, it's philosophy is a common good. So it, it, it tries to support students where possible. Um, there's always one, a full fee scholarship per uh, point of entry. So there's a, there'll be a full fee scholarship coming up in for January 21 entry. Similarly for September entries, there is the equivalent. But the British School of Fashion has a separate um, pot of money where if you don't manage to get the full fees one, then we look at all the applications and on merit say, well, okay, we will take some money from that pot and. Um, allocate it out as, as equitably as possible. So we tend to allocate out £5,000 discounts off the fees. Uh, that's in addition to any discount that the, the university automatically applies. Mm, that's great. Um, and we've kind of touched upon this earlier, but um, so one of the key benefits of the courses is the connections to industry. Is yeah. there anything else you'd like to add to that? Yes, I, I realised there were a load of things I didn't actually touch on at all. So... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> the reason that I sort of am thinking about it more is because prior to um, this semester, in other words, prior to us going fully online, I would say that the MBA uh, luxury brand management had by far the most um, in, in links into industry. And I still think that is the case, actually, because certainly on one or two of the modules, um, there's almost weekly attendance by someone from industry into the class. And that those there have, it has to be that way for an MBA really. So those particular topics under luxury concepts and practice, for example, are curated so that a speaker can come, can come in. Um, yesterday we had a luxury recruiter in, um, the week before that we had um, an ex-CEO talking around um, airport retaining in the beauty industry, she's now working um, in real estate um next week we've got the founder of a, of, a, of a digital marketing agency um we've had analysts in you know so th th there's a there's a whole raft of people but they're, they're not just pitched randomly as, as people to come in and talk for the sake of it it's curated around the topics 
But um, what's happened is because it, the, the opportunity to, to get someone to give up, say, half an hour, 45 minutes of their time is a lot easier in this kind of yeah. setup, then we have tended to have a lot more of that going on across all the programmes at the moment. Um, so there's a, there's a really great uh, business course at Luxury Promise, for example, which is a resale business. They have a, a store in South Morton Street, which I walked past recently, and with the founders of that were on in the fashion business creation program. Um, and what was nice because other students could could join in that. So those links are often shared. Um, the marketing students were able to join um, a, um, a, the, a talk with the chief marketing officer of our luxury brand. I shan't mention who it is here. Um, through um, another university because there was an agreement to share a link. So there's a lot more in the way of collaboration going on, I think, which is kind of nice because otherwise it's set out in silos. Within, within I'll, I'll talk a bit more about the luxury programs because um, there are two of them. So it's almost half of students. Um, we have, I mean, I personally work as a journalist in covering luxury, so covering the conferences globally and feed that into the curriculum, which is once again, why, um, why I, I'm pretty certain that, that, that the student's understanding of, say, heritage in luxury, for example, the history of it, the origin, you know, um, Madame Chanel and uh, Paris and, and, you know, all, all the Italian families, Whilst that, that is, has been important, it actually is starting to wane a bit now and the discussions in the industry are about how a brand can be legitimate around its meaning values and its demonstrable contribution towards improving sustainability and those sorts of things are, are much more important. And as much as we can probably assertively feel that, it's nice for me to be able to report back that the Condé Nast conference or the Financial Times conference or, or whichever it is, these are these are the CEOs of Balenciaga or Alexander McQueen or whoever that are saying these things. Yeah. We also have an industry network of our companies who um, who, who engage with us um, in different ways and um, have offered internships and um, facilitated visits. So some of our luxury students went to for, for a, almost a unique behind the scenes tour of the Dorchester for two hours, um, looking at the bedrooms, looking at the kitchens, looking at, um, you know, the event rooms. Um, so that, that's really hard to get normally. And once again, it's about the relationships we have with, with fairly senior people in the industry who can make it happen. Fashion business creation students went up to Manchester to see Boohoo um, because that was kind of relevant to their um, to their understanding of how business can get small to set up the structure of it, yeah. the way it's organized and so on. And we just had a question, um, you've kind of just said with the internship, um, so the question is, are students able to take part in internships and um, does the university help to find these? Um, the answer is <clears throat> yes, yes, students do get internships um, and it happens in different ways. Um, as of next year, it will be more structured and organized simply because Prior to this academic year, none of the programmes had any kind of internship uh, elements built into it. But now there is an extra 60 credits at the end of 180 where um, at, you know, at, at a point in it, you can go and do an internship um, and get that extra 60 credits, a professional practice uh, module, if you like. I know that's popular with a lot of international students. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, there is, of course, there's help in getting those and how to succeed. Um, we, aside from that, our, our just our natural kind of relationship with industry means that um, that, that we, we get requests. And yes. I think like a lot of places, a lot of companies, you know, they, they're simply looking for um, good students, you know, and what I mean by good students is, is not you're actually good, <laughs> but that you're, that you're, you're motivated, um, that, um, you, you know, obviously you pay attention to your studies, you've got something to offer, um, you're flexible, you have initiative, you, you, you love the brand that you know, presumably you're going to want to um, do an internship with. So that's why we tend to get specific requests. I mean, there's a, a well-known French a luxury brand, I shan't mention the name, that's currently put a request out to us now for an internship starting in January for a year. You know, and um, so we will find out who's interested in doing that and then gather CVs and send them off. And then that will be a process that the, the business want to engage in. 
but we also have the opportunity with some companies to um, to run like a mini research project if actually there can't be a physical um, internship. So, so it's a kind of flexible approach. Yeah, and you already told us earlier about one example, but um, where do graduates of the British School of Fashion tend to go on and work? Gosh, there are so many places, and um, and I, I did pull out a big list. So forgive me, I'm going to pick some of them off that, but. <laughs> Um, they're, 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 it's fairly diverse. First, I would, I would say, I mean, they're obvious companies. Um, we have Swatch. Um, the person went, uh, went to Swatch as a PR and social media manager. Uh, we had a graduate analyst at uh, Luca Faluni. Um, had content man management specialist at TikTok. Uh, media comms manager at Harrods. Um, got an analyst at Bulgari. In fact, the, 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 the graduate had job at Bulgari actually had three offers. Um, there was a, there was, yeah, there's, um, there was an architect's firm that opened, was opening up a, an office in, in New York and they wanted her to go out there because she was American and run it for, for them. Wow. And I think she just wanted a career within a, within a big group. So she's an analyst at Bulgari, which is obviously part of, or Bulgari, which is part of the LVMH group. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, so, and, but they're one of our, um, graduates on the MBA went back to work for uh, the Ministry of um, in Investment and Innovation in uh, the Russian government. Wow. Um, so, you know, obviously her MBA took her to that kind of role. A um, couple of students have gone to work for Ralph Lauren, one in the UK and one in, um, in the US. However, so, so many of our students are international, they do tend to go back to their own countries. And the MBA Lux, for example, I, I interview for, it's the only program we interview for and 50 percent of the time people are saying to me that what i want to ask them what do you want to do afterwards um a lot of them say i'd like to work for dior, dior or bentley or chanel or you know um wherever but the other half will say i'm going to go back to my own country and set up a business or work for the family business or work for work for a franchisee of a luxury brand in that country so I think what they're doing is they're trying to get the specialist knowledge and skills and then take that back where the luxury market is growing in their own home, home country. Yeah. Oh, great. Great positions. <laughs> and um, do applicants need to have um, fashion experience or a degree in the field before they apply? No, not at all. Um, I, over the years, I, I've... Um, become more reflective on this. I think if you were doing, if you're doing a postgraduate short intensive course around something specialist like fashion buying and merchandising, I think it would be a massive asset if you had a, a business related degree mm -hmm. um, or a fashion degree that incorporated business. So if you came from say um, fine arts and were wanting to do something as specialist as that, then you could still do it. And I have been proved wrong in the past. And, and actually, this, well, it brings me to a point about what I think the ideal graduate is at the moment. But for, for the kind of programs that we're doing here, where you've got a whole year and maybe a bit longer if you start in, in the, the January sense, um, no, you don't have to have un, un, undertaken a fashion degree, particularly for luxury, because luxury is not just about fashion anyway. Um, my, un, my, my feeling is that if you're a kind of student who's applying for postgraduate in fashion, you, you've got a love for it anyway. And if you've got a love for it, then you're going to be immersed in it. You're going to be all over Instagram following, you know, 20 different brands. You'll know what lists top hundred um, brands are. You'll know, um, you know, we, you know, the difference between sort of fear of God and, and other kind of newly trendy kind of labels and yeah. um, why Gucci is number one in lists, you know, hottest brands for q3 through 2020 and so actually having a physical qualification or an actual qualification it doesn't really make a lot of difference it's about your passion and it brings me back then to the other point is that the the the, the thing that's most important is your passion to study that particular subject because if you're very motivated to study it then you'll do well Perfect, thank you. And just a couple more questions from me. Um, what would you say is your favorite thing about the British School of Fashion? Um, I, 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 so many different levels can answer that question. Yeah. And I, 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 my own careers, I started off working in industry. 
uh, I left that to go and work at London College of Fashion and in therein published books and, and did a lot of writing as a journalist. Um, so I have had many different aspects to um, what I do, which is why I, I think uh, I value the industry connection so much. But ultimately, my favourite part of everything is actually working with students. And, and I think you can't be involved in education unless you have a, a actual real passion for the subject that you, you're working in yeah. and absolutely a determination to help people achieve their passion in that area. And so I suppose that the, the absolute delight is, is uh, I love graduation day and obviously seeing everyone have, you know, have, have uh, their family there. And so that, that's lovely too, to meet them. But actually my, my favorite is when the, the person gets the job they want. Yeah. And, and a little secret here, Maria, <laughs> at least half, if not two thirds of the people I invite back in to speak have been ex-students. Wow. Who are now, um, I, I think we have, we certainly have a couple of managing directors, who've got a lot of directors. Um, and, and these are people who over time have, um, have progressed. Some, some I, I just taught them and they were brilliant enough. They went and did it. Some I've kept in touch with and helped them along the way or just given a bit of advice and connected them in other ways. It's, it's so, so many, so often there's so many people that you can't remember each example, but yeah. that matters. And, um, and I think that that's, that's it, you know, it's, it's about enabling other people to do the things they want to experience the things that I've, I've enjoyed. Oh, that's great. And, what advice would you give someone who's thinking about studying um, either of the four courses at the British School of Fashion? Well, find out a bit more about British School of Fashion um, and, and the university. Uh, I, I know we're online at the moment, but obviously you know, we, we hope to be back on campus at some point in um, early in the new year. We, I'm sure we will be uh, in, in the sort of la, uh, early, late spring, early summer. But, um, and if you're thinking about September, then, then, then think on campus. Um, so think about the location, think about the inspiration of the area. You know, Brick Lane is a fantastic creative hub. Uh, as you know, Spitalfields is just the best amazing place um, to buy anything. Yeah. Um, and and you've, got, you've, you've got a dynamic that I think re represents what London is, that, that sort of cross of cultures. And I don't mean cultures in people necessarily, although that's there too, I mean, um, you've got the city, you know, sort of, which is fast, aggressive, financially oriented. And then you've got Old Street and the sort of fintech startups, which, which is a, a lot smaller, more nimble and creative. And then you've got the creative hubs. And it's, it's, it's that interface of these three different types of people, which is fascinating. Um, so I think that's one thing. Um, I can't remember. What, what the actual question is. <laughs> um, what advice you would give students thinking? Oh yeah, so, so look, look, look at all aspects, look at where we are, um, re research the programmes. And I think if you're an international student on a practical level, I'm sorry to be boring, on a practical level, um, you know, from a UK VI perspective, one of the things that's very, very important is a statement of purpose. And I can't say this enough, you, you really need to say why you are doing that programme. And the best way of saying why you're, you want to do that programme is to illustrate um, the modules, the kind of modules that, that uh, you like and uh, reference them specifically. <laughs> so if you want to do the MBA Lux, and you say, you know, I really want to do a program that studies luxury, but it also has law and finance in it, as this program does, um, and, and do that. Um, look, at, look at what um, the student experience has been. You'll see um, sort of blog kind of um, articles up about speakers we've had in, um, and Sonia does a great job in, in social media, as I'm sure you are too, in, in helping sort of uh, show what goes on. But um, yeah, I, I would say do your research and, and, and feel free to ask us questions. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today and um, very informational, lots of info on the courses. So thank you for that. And thank you everyone else for joining. And yeah, if you have any additional questions, um, feel free to just message our page and then we'll get back to you. And thank you very much. That's a pleasure. You all have a nice day. It's a bit cold outside today, but at yeah, least well, it's no rain. <laughs> that's true. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye now.